Well, hey guys, Gary Jenkins here, retired Kansas City Police Intelligence Unit Detective. Back here with one of my little short bios. I, you know, I did uh, beat on Genovese recently. This is going to be about Thomas Lucchese, better known as Tommy Brown or Three Fingers Brown. He was a prominent American mobster and the founding member of the Lucchese crime family. He was born June 10th, 1889 in Palermo, Italy, and immigrated to the United States with his family at a young age. So he's like a real Sicilian. Tommy Brown or Tom Lucchese earned his nickname Three Fingers after losing parts of two fingers on his right hand in an industrial accident when he was working at a cement plant when he was a kid. That didn't hold him back. Little Tommy Lucchese became involved in organized crime at an early age, quickly rose through the ranks of the underworld because of prohibition primarily. And you can see the photo up here of him holding up his right hand with only three fingers. In his early years, Tommy Lucchese was a co close associate of the mobster Gaetano Ana, who was a real old school Sicilian mobster and an old mustache peak black hander. He worked as a hitman and enforcer for the Reina crime family. And he was known for his first endeavor. Tommy Lucchese hired guys to wash store windows in East Harlem. That set up a little business when he was young. When a store owner refused to pay Lucchese's guys to wash the windows, mysteriously, vandals broke out those same windows. And then, of course, they came back around and you know, hey, we can probably stop those windows from being broken. You just got to hire us to wash them. Probably by the end, they didn't even wash them. After Gaetano Reina was assassinated in 1930, Brown and a group of other Reina loyalists formed their own crime family, which would become known as Lucchese Crime Family. Now, he came up with Lucky Luciano, of course, and during the Castelmarese War, he tipped off Lucky Luciano that Salvatore Maranzano was plotting to kill Lucky. Luciano then acted in quickly and he sent some Jewish gangsters who were dressed up in suits and, and ties and had briefcases and they claimed to be IRS agents and they went into Maranzano's office and Maranzano just welcomed them in and, you know, they murdered him right there. And this act would really set up Luciano as the boss. Tommy Gagliano took over the Riena family and they would name Tommy Lucchese as underboss. Now, during these years, Luciano formed the commission and he kept peace, so everybody was making money. And Tommy Gagliano was a quiet boss, and Bill Bonanno and Stefano Magadino and Vino Genovese and Carlo Gambino kind of took the center stage. Gagliano preferred to have Tommy Lucchese carry out all the public actions for him during this time, so he kind of became known more as the boss. And Gagliano was such a recluse, he even failed to attend Luciano's Havana conference and sent Lucchese in his place. Pretty well, well, cementing Lucchese as, you know, the heir apparent, shall we say. And Tommy Gagliano died in 1951, just a couple, three years after the Cuba meeting. Thomas Three Finger Lucchese, aka Three Finger Brown, became the boss. Now, something a little different about this family is many people referred to them as the Broga or the Brogata. And people in life might call them Lukes for Lucchese's Lukes. Interesting. I never heard that before. I haven't found that online. So now as the boss of the renamed Lucchese family, he is, was involved, of course, in the normal wide range of criminal activity, extortion, loan sharking, gambling. Tommy Lucchese was well known for his kind of, he, he took a page out of Gagliano's book and he stayed back. He wasn't, you know, a guy that was really out there like Vito Genovese, who wanted to be the boss of bosses and all that kind of thing. And he took on the name of Thomas Brown during these years, enables them to really move about in regular business circles. We had a guy in Kansas City who took on the name of Cummings, uh, Willie or William Camasano, but he took on the name of William Cummings because he had businesses in, like a meat business. And he didn't want to be known as Camasano because Camasano was named by the 50s, especially after the war. Where it really was was linked with the mafia as much as the Sabella was in Kansas City. Tommy Lucchese was known for his intelligence, his cunning, and but a willingness to use violence to get what he wanted. He sided with Vino Genovese during his attempt to take over as the boss of bosses, if you remember. But the Appalachian Convention happened, and you know they tried to kill Frank Costello. I used Vincent de Chin Gigante to do that, and didn't work so much well. And pretty soon, Genovese is out. It embarrassed, embarrassed him so much that Lucchese then formed an alliance with Luciano, who was in Sicily at the time, and Frank Costello and Mayor Lansky and Carlo Gambino. And he was actually really instrumental in setting up Genovese for a narcotics conviction, which he went to 
you know, Atlanta down there, they got, they paid some Puerto Rican guy to testify that Genovese had, you know, had invested money into a big narcotics deal and they had a case on this guy anyhow. And so, you know, rest is history. And then what's interesting about that is, is when Genovese goes to Atlanta, one of his really low level guys, Joseph Bellacci was down there and Bellacci was paranoid and Genovese was not very friendly. And, and, in Bellacci's mind, he interpreted Genovese's lack of recognition and friendliness to him as Genovese was wanting to have him killed. Now, that's how bad Genovese was. A guy came to Bellacci one day who was close to Genovese, just walked up to him or was close to him in the yard or something. I don't know the exact details, but uh, Bellacci picked up a, a piece of pipe and killed the guy. Bellacci now catches a murder case, and he's looking at maybe a, a death sentence. And, and of course, the rest is history. Joseph Bellacci, they set up the Bellacci suite in one of the penitentiaries, and he testifies, and he really he really changed the the course of of FBI investigation and local police department's investigation. He really brought it home that there was a real deal mafia. They were organized. This is how they were organized and, and exposed everything. So Genovese, out of all his shenanigans, was kind of the the instrument that really started the downfall of the mafia. Uh, now, interesting things in, in this world, it's kind of like this feudal world to cement relations with another family. Thomas Gambino, Carlo Gambino's son, Thomas Gambino, married Francis Lucchese, Three Fingers' daughter. He grows old and does his thing the rest of the years. But despite all his criminal activities, Lucchese, Brown, Three Fingered Brown was a real respected figure in the community and the, the regular community because he, he was known for his charitable donations to lo local organizations in New York and in the area. He'll die of natural causes August 15th, 1969 in New York City. But today, you know, he's really remembered as one of the most notorious and influential mobsters of the 20th century. You know, you he didn't have the name recognition of Lucky Luciano or Frank Costello. He's more of a guy behind the scenes, but but he was really influential. So thanks a lot, guys. Don't forget, I like to ride motorcycles. So watch out for motorcycles when you're out there. If you have a problem with PTSD, go to the VA website and get that hotline number. If you have a problem with drugs or alcohol, go see Anthony Ruggiano down in Florida. His website has a hotline number. And most of all, like and subscribe and keep coming back. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.